Oh, it's a little devious. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Gremlins. Admittedly, I actually have never seen this movie. Somehow. I know a lot of friends of mine have seen this movie. I've always heard stories about it. I know that Steven Spielberg was attached to it. This is a script that's written by Chris Columbus, directed by Joe Dante. It has some fantastic animatronics in it. It has a very funny, kind of weird Spielberg-like horror vibe. Admittedly, I actually enjoyed this film a lot more than I expected, especially how I saw it. If you see my cup here, this is my Iron Giant cup. They were doing a double feature at the drive-in that's in my town here, and they show the Iron Iron Giant first, which was fantastic to see. If you've never seen my review about it, uh, I'll put it in the link in the description. It's one of my favorite movies I've ever done. It's one of my favorite animated films of all time. And then they showed Gremlins afterwards. And admittedly, a lot of people didn't stay around for that one. Within the first few minutes of Gizmo being introduced, one, this is a cute little motherfucker. But two, the animatronics of this film are actually very, very cool. Not only with just how the creatures move, their mindsets, kind of the unique and character building sort of quips about them, but also the effects for them. For instance, when Gizmo gets water on him and the little bubbling effect is on him, that was actually really creepy. And then when the little other gremlins grow into their own thing, that was also a really cool effect as well. If this is the movie that birthed the whole Furby thing, I wouldn't be surprised because especially when Gizmo's driving the little car, it's so cute. And then there's these horrifying creatures. I find it funny that for a film that has such a very bizarre yet kind of kid-like concept, at least kid-like for the 80s. The main character, Billy, is just this very, very regular person. Like, there's not anything kind of unique about him, but he's also not boring because he's just a very, very relatable person in terms of how he acts with people, how he talks to people, and just how he kind of handles the situation. It's, it's pretty normal. It's the mom that I'll give points to that right when shit gets real. Right when the things start attacking her, she doesn't hesitate to murder these things. She throws one inside the blender and she goes full on psycho on the other one. I actually was a bit upset that she was out of the movie so fast because I said, this is clearly the survivor. This is clearly the woman who you should be getting behind in terms of this sort of situation. I found the dad kind of funny because I thought he was a different version of John Candy. His look, his traits, I just, he was giving me John Candy vibes even though I know the actor wasn't John Candy. And also something that I thought was a little bit kind of underappreciated was the girlfriend that uh, Billy is after. She has an incredibly depressing story and for a film that is based on what it is, it has a bit of a human factor in terms of crushing reality. The reason why she doesn't like Christmas is because her dad tried to do a Santa kind of prank on her, but he died going down the chimney. I was like, Jesus. She has a bit where she talks about how Christmas is also one of the most depressing times of the year, and that while some people are opening gifts, Others are opening their wrists. I remember that brought me right back to the movie. I enjoy this film. I think it's a fun little time. The effects are just phenomenal, but that's something that everyone's always talked about. I'll definitely give extra points to the script. Chris Columbus definitely has this great sort of feeling to it. It's not a John Hughes film, but it's in the same sort of reality as one. It's not a Steven Spielberg film, but it's in the same reality as one. There's all these different elements, these different creators who are putting their kind of magic into this film. And really the most memorable part is the gremlins themselves. And the film's story is not exactly as thrilling as you would think it would be. It's still an enjoyable film and hell, you could even show this to kids nowadays. It might, you know, grow them up a bit. But on the same side, I can understand why some people just really aren't boohoo about this film. I don't really care if I'd ever see it again. I would watch clips of the creatures, because I'd like to see that again. But otherwise, it's an okay film for me. In the end, I'm gonna give Gremlins a four out of seven. I would definitely say watch it, especially just for how great the animatronics are. Just how very intricate some of the stuff is. And there's that old argument that they would try to redo this with CG and it would just wouldn't look the same. It wouldn't have that same feel. Because this makes it look like toys are killing people. And I guess maybe that's where Toy Soldiers came from, but that movie didn't do it well either. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. 
but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.